It's Chelsea Messenger with Picks and Parlays. We're talking game one of the NBA Finals. Don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the bell if you want notifications every time we post a new video. The Lakers and the Heat. Who would have thought the Heat would be up there? The Lakers favored minus five points. The total is 217 and a half. The Heat have covered in seven of their last 10. The Lakers have covered or pushed in seven of their last 10 as well, but only one win against the number in their last four. Nick from the Insiders Room is here to talk about this matchup that the NBA has been tough to handicap when it comes to the bubble, but I'm sure you have some some good thoughts on this one. Uh, initial thoughts when you see the Lakers and the Heat matching up together. Well, I have a play on the total in this one, so I'm gonna steer clear of that. But I do, I like the Lakers in game one. I think they're gonna come out on top. I think a combination of their big men is just going to be too much for Miami to handle. Of course, LeBron James, he's back in the NBA Finals for the ninth time out of the last 10 years. Uh, oh, um. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, now he's he's facing his former team. He left South Beach and he took his, his talents to Cleveland back in 2014. And there were hurt feelings on both sides. So, you know, the storylines for this series, they sort of write themselves. Miami, I think, is a really great team. I've I've bet on them a lot already in in the playoffs, and as you mentioned, I think they're uh, eight and two against the spread in their last ten coming in, or something pretty close to that. Jimmy Butler, Bam Adebayo, and Goran Dragic. I uh, I'm horrible with names, so if I'm butchering that, I apologize. <laughs> but you know, along with Tyler Harrow and also Eric Spoelstra, he he's been just masterful. He's been a genius in making adjustments throughout these playoffs, and I would say that he is a huge reason why the the Heat are here to this point. And but win or lose, I think Miami has exceeded expectations to this point. They're happy. Sure. They're beyond ecstatic to finally get here. But for the Lakers, nothing short of a championship is going to be satisfactory here. And so when I look at these matchups, uh, I think that. You know, Anthony Davis and LeBron James, Miami likes to play a, a zone defense. And so mm -hmm. James is going to be able to carve up this this defense because, you know, instead of uh, Daniel Feist catching the ball in the middle for the Celtics in the last round, it's going to be Davis. You know, this is an all-star center. He's going to be able to exploit these types of situations. Davis has hit almost 80% of his playoff shots in the paint and more than 50% from mid-range. Guarding James, I think it's going to wear down Butler. And if the Heat don't get an all-star effort from Butler in every single game, I just don't think there's any way they're going to have a, a shot in this series. I think LA is the better team in every respect, and I think it's going to pull away down the stretch in game one for a comfortable cover. The only thing that scares me about this Heat team is that they can catch fire when it comes to their shooting. And I think that's kind of a bad matchup when it comes to the Lakers, uh, which is a team that does not shoot the three ball especially well. It seems like the Lakers can go cold at times. And also, it doesn't seem like there's a sense of urgency always there. I think they know that they're the better team. And sometimes LeBron doesn't really turn it on unless he absolutely needs to. That's what worries me. And that's kind of what worries me with them getting points. Granted, it's only five this time. I feel like they've been six and a half, seven point favorites most of the time, especially against the Nuggets. But uh, is there anything else that you would look at when it comes to handicapping this first game of the series? You do bring up a good point there. Miami has been fantastic shooting uh, from the floor and from the outside. And the Lakers, they do have a tendency to struggle with consistency from game to game. But I think that having this extra few days off to focus and concentrate, that is going to help them. But one thing that the Lakers do really well, and one thing they did were one of the best in the regular season, was on the defensive end. They are extremely good at defending the perimeter. They have a, a number of veteran guards that are able, they're able to rotate in and out. And so I think that that's, they're going to be able to counter uh, with their strong defensive play on the outside. And one thing I also noticed in last series is the referees have been letting them play. Rondo has been playing extremely aggressive defense, and I think if they allow him to continue doing that, it's going to be a hard day for the Heat. Exactly. Harrow and these and these young guards, they're in for a bit of a surprise here, playing these veterans in these types of situations. So, as I say, I do have a, a strong play on the total, and that's up at picks and parlays. But for this uh, play, my strongest play on the side, I'm going to go with the Lakers. All right. It should be a fun one to watch regardless. And that's going to do it for our NBA talk here on Picks and Parlays. Good stuff from Nick uh, from the Insider's Room. Nick, thanks for joining us.